The Eritrean national football team has withdrawn from qualifying for their 2026 World Cup due to the possibility of players escaping. According to The Guardian, the management of the African national team fears that the players will not return to the country after matches abroad. Athletes fleeing to other countries straight from competitions is not a new phenomenon. The first time such an incident occurred was in the middle of the last century. The first known case of escape occurred at the 1946 Olympics in London. It is interesting that this fact was not connected with an active athlete but with a sports official. 58-year-old Maria Provesnikova from Czechoslovakia, who then headed the National Artistic Gymnastic Team and the International Federation of the Sport, decided not to return to her homeland after the Olympic but to fly to the United States. I'm a political refugee and I'm proud of it. It's a strange feeling to leave my country where I worked all my life, but this is the only way to become free from the words of Maria Provaznikova. Provaznikova was the leading woman in the Czechoslovak social movement Falcon. This society used a system of gymnastic training that motivated the Czech people to revive personal and national consciousness. A month before the 1948 Olympics, Provesnikova led a squad of 28,000 female gymnasts at a rally in Prague, where they expressed support for former Czechoslovak president Eduard Benes, a supporter of democracy and opposed the country's current leader, communist Clement Gottwald. The woman shouted, Long live Benz! You can't dictate who we love. After this, the police came to Provesnikova and warned her that she would be personally responsible for a repeat incident. Maria admitted that she began to fear the current authorities in her country and understood that upon returning from the Olympic Games, she would have to authorize a purge in Sokol, where she was leader on a half a million women. Czechoslovak authorities considered removing Provesnikova from her post as head of the national artistic gymnastic team before the Olympic Games, but their gymnasts strongly opposed this. The country's authorities gave in to the athletes. They went to London under the leadership of Provesnikova and became champions in team competitions. Then Maria abandoned all her posts and and fled straight from London to the United States. The New York Times published an article saying that the communist government of Czechoslovakia had agreed to Provesnikova's departure, but she denied this. In the USA, Maria taught gymnastics and lived to be 100 years old, dying in 1991. The largest athletes escaping from one country to another occurred at their 1956 Olympic Games in Melbourne. The Hungarian team took a delegation of almost 100 people to Australia, but less than half returned home. Just before the start of the Olympics, an armed uprising against the communist regime began in Hungary. When the plane with the Hungarian athletes landed in Melbourne, it became known that, that a contingent of Soviet troops had suppressed the riot. Even then, many Hungarian Olympians decided not to return to their homeland. The communists bombed Budapest. The revolution ended and repression began. This is all. I am not going home, from the words of Erwin Zadar, a player of the Hungarian national water polo team. The most memorable moment of political tension at the Melbourne Olympics is associated
competed with the Hungarian water polo team in one of the matches of the final round. The Hungarians met with the Soviet Union team that meeting was later called Blood in the Pool. Their stands were sold out, about 8,000 spectators crammed into 6,000 seat arena to watch the real carnage in the water. The Hungarians provoked the Soviet water polo players who for their time being tried to control themselves but shortly before the end of the match Yuri Prokopov hit a rinzetter in the eye area and caused a severe cut to him. A lot of blood got into the water. Zeller was unable to continue the game. He had Hungarian fans began to run from the stands to the pool shouting anti Soviet slogans spitting at the opposing water polo players and throwing various objects at them. The judges stopped the match early and awarded the victory to the Hungarian team, which at that time was leading the score. Subsequently, the national team of this country won gold in the water polo Olympic tournament. Immediately after the victory, part of the team, including Zadar, who was considered the best young player in Europe, asked for political asylum in Australia. Later on, Hungary became democratic. All the water polo players who fled returned to the homeland, but not Zadar. He went to the USA and never again took part in major water polo tournaments. The former athlete taught dance, worked as a lifeguard at a sport club in Auckland and installed air conditioners and assembled furniture. The Zadar died in 2012 at the age of 77. Instead of coming back as a hero, earning 3,000 foreigns a month and having a chance to go to the next three Olympics. I have it all up to become a nobody with no marketable skills and no ability to speak the language of the country I fled to. It was not an easy decision, but I hated the system and the Hungarian communists. I just couldn't imagine going back. And you know, over the past 55 years, there has not been a moment when I regretted it, Erwin Zadar. The water polo player were not the only representatives of the Hungarian delegation at their 1956 games who decided not to return home after the competition. The entire Olympic team was supported by the local Hungarian community in Melbourne. Athletes who decided to flee to the West were provided with support, help with finding work and housing. 48 athletes agreed to these conditions. According to Sports Illustrated, Many of them eventually made it to the United States and took part in 59 city Hungarian freedom tour performing in various sport in front of American audiences. Interestingly, to obtain US residency under American law at that time, Hungarians had to travel to the Philippines and apply for local citizenship in order to qualify for American residency. However, there were Hungarian athletes who did not to go to the USA but remained in Australia after their 1956 Olympics. For example, the football team settled in Melbourne and a year later uh, were involved in the creation of their Melbourne Hungary football club which played in the local league for almost 30 years. The most recent known case of an athlete fleeing to another country occurred at their 2021 Tokyo Olympics. Belarusian athlete Kristina Timanovskaya was supposed to compete in her profile 200 meter distance, but the day before, the National Olympic Committee of Belarus decided to send Timanovskaya home due to her emotional and psychological state. Kristina was bought a plane ticket and sent to Tokyo airport. There, she contacted the Japanese police, saying that they were were trying to deport her to her homeland without her consent and asked 
for help from their International Olympic Committee. I'm afraid that in Belarus I might be put in prison. I'm not afraid of being fired or kicked out to be the national team. I'm worried about my safety, said Kristina Timonovskaya. The fact is that during their 2020 protests in Belarus, Timonovskaya criticized the current government and during the Olympics in Tokyo she published an emotional post having learned that due to the lack of athletes she was announced to participate in their uh, two and uh, 200 meter relay race which for a sprinter is non-core it turns out that our very cool bosses decided everything as usual for us. They screwed up with girls who didn't have enough doping tests to fly to their first ever Olympics and their management decided to make a night's move and start me in the relay race. Why should we pay for your mistakes if you messed up with the girls with their doping tests, with their samples? I don't care about anything. Why should I deal with these problems? Kristina Timonovska posted an emotional post. Timonovska later deleted this post and wrote that she was ready to go to the relay and support the girls, but superior people must sometimes take into account the opinions of athletes. The head coach of the Belarusian track and field athletics team Yuri Musevich said that their difficult situation in the relay race was discussed at the meeting everyone calmly accepted their information and athletes had no questions but it was clear that something was wrong with Timonovskaya Moisevich said as a result Timonovskaya flew from the Olympics not to Belarus but to yes, Poland she spent the night at a Tokyo airport under the protection of a representative of the International Olympic Committee and then received approval from the Polish authorities to enter the country. The athlete now lives there. She tried to obtain citizenship through an accelerated procedure in order to compete for Poland, but this uh, did not work out. Timonovskaya will have to wait another two years before entering the truck under the flag of her new country. Stay safe, stay tuned. One, two, three. We are gonna start to cut um Czechoslovak nine oh, oh my god what is water and water coffee is it okay I want some coffee okay <laughs> 